welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we get the right topics and we obviously interview the right uh, guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We have a big debate on the cocoa sector tonight. The government has increased the producer price or the price it pays at the farm gate for cocoa farmers to 33,000 cities, almost 60% increase. But that's not the full story. We'll be speaking to the minority who believe this increase is the lowest in decades. We'll speak to the cocoa board itself and speak to the cocoa farmers as we try and unravel this latest situation with the world's cocoa. Stay with us. Welcome back. So these are tough times for cocoa. The output of the two major producers has gone down drastically. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire together produce about 70% of the world's cocoa because of the swollen shoot disease, because of El Nino, because of Galamse and other challenges of production. Ghana's production is down 35%, Ivory Coast production down 25%. As a consequence of that, the world price of cocoa for the first time in almost 40 years has breached the $10,000 per ton mark. But this is the futures price. Commodities are sold either on the spot market or the futures market. The spot market is the price you pay if you want to buy now. The futures market is a year ahead. Be that as it may, the $10,000 per ton is very, very high. Now, how much is Ghana paying its cocoa producer? I'll come to that shortly. But let me show you four charts on world price of cocoa. First one is the world map of cocoa producers. So you have Ivory Coast, the leading producer, followed by Ghana. Then there's Cameroon, Nigeria, and others. Africa together produces 73% of world's cocoa. The Americas, Brazil and Ecuador produce 21%. Asia and Oceania, around 5%. So cocoa is really a West African commodity, as this chart will show from the, uh, the, the program we did a few weeks back. The other big issue is Ghana's own production tonnage. Now, on the first slide, Ghana's tonnage was around 680,000 tons which is the lowest in decades. In fact, if you look at the tonnage from 2010, 1 million tons, 2010, 2011, came down to 800,000 in the same, under the same President Mills. He also clocked 896,000 in 2013. Of course, he died in 2012. Mahama, 896,000 to 969,000. 969,000 being his best. That's 2016, 2017. 2017. Akufuado takes over 900,000 tons, comes down to 766. In 2020, 1 million tons again. But look at that. In 2021, 684,000, the lowest in that time series. And then 2022, 2023, which is last year, 650,000. Very, very low indeed. Again, the syndicated loan, the amount we raised, still on that same chart. $800 million is the lowest since the record we picked from $1.5 billion under Mills to $2 billion in 2016. It's now $800 million. The interest rate as well on that, very, very high, 8%. So these are not good times for the cocoa sector. Let's look at the producer price journey. This is in Ghana cities, and this is per ton. A ton is 1,000 kilograms. So from 2,400 Ghana cities in 2009, look at 2012, 3,009, 339. It goes all the way to 7,600 in 2016. It maintains the same. So when, when the 2016 season ended, that same figure was repeated for three years, 2016, 2017, 2018. 2019, it goes to 8,240. 2020, it goes to 10,560 Ghana cities per ton. And by the way, you need to look at the dollar rate for each period and then pro pro properly deflate it. But we're just losing Ghana cities here. 2022, 21, 22, 10,000. So it maintains the same price here. So for three consecutive years, it maintains, it maintains as well. 12,800 for last year. Now, September 9, September 9, 2023, President Kufado raises the price from 12,800 to 20,926. Now, for all of these years, there's only one announcement every year. 
unprecedented. There's been a second announcement, and we've tried to understand why this government is changing the price twice in a year. Now, it's gone to 33,120. And we are still in the same 2023 24 season. The cocoa season begins in September and ends in June. So we are still in the same cocoa season. So a few things. We've repeated the same price for three consecutive years from 2016 and then 2022 years. But for the first time, there's been a double increment in the same year. These are some of the issues. Now, the, the challenge we are facing is shown in this slide. So the production, as I said earlier, has been the lowest in decades, about 600,000 tons. And it's projected to even be lower this year. The four reasons are swollen shoot virus disease, weather patterns. We are told that this is the hottest April since record started. It's been the hottest year. 2022 is the hottest year in 122 years. Galamsey is affecting cocoa production as well. And then there's also smuggling to Ivory Coast. Now, quick context. Ivory Coast has increased its cocoa farm gate price to 1,500 francs per kilogram. That's about $2.8 per kilogram. And that's very similar to Ghana because you take the 33,000 CDs, if you deflate that to the dollar, it's around the same figure, 2.48, I should say. So Ivory Coast and Ghana are both paying around 2.48 US dollar per kilogram for cocoa. Let's start with the minority. Eriko Poku is from a cocoa growing area. He's from a Sunafu South. He's a ranking member on the Greek committee in parliament. He thinks this is not good. He, he doesn't think the price increase is great. Honorable Ekopoku, good evening. Thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Good evening, Bernard. And thank you for the opportunity. So I've just shown you the history of cocoa. This is the worst year of cocoa production in decades. This is the lowest output. The government has increased the price by 58%. This is the highest price on record. Yet you're saying this is a bad deal for Ghanaian cocoa farmers. Can you explain why? Uh, Bernard, thank you once again for the opportunity. Uh, I said that this is the lowest, the lowest share of the world market price given to cocoa farmers in the history of cocoa in Ghana. Bernard, we know we determine the cocoa price based on how much we are getting for cocoa from the world market. Because Cocoa Board is serving as an intermediary between the producers and the buyers. And so if you go to the world market, and the environment is so good for cocoa farmers to the extent that prices are surging to unprecedented levels, certainly we will expect same to happen in the lives of cocoa farmers. This year is a very unique year for cocoa farmers. It's a different year altogether because the shortage of cocoa in Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire has occasioned global shortage to the extent that demand has far exceeded supply of cocoa in the world market. If we monitoring forecasts from the International Cocoa Organization, they indicate that the shortage in the world market is estimated between 300,000 and 500,000 tons of cocoa. And so in reality, people have the money. They want to buy cocoa. They are not getting cocoa. And that is why the price is rising and rising, rising every day. And now it's at 10,000 US dollars and even above. And so when you use a conservative exchange rate of $1 to 13 cities, you get a ton of cocoa, the city equivalent of 130,000 Ghana cities. Now a ton of cocoa is 16 bars. So it's just a matter of you dividing 130,000 by 16 to give you a payback price of 8,125. And so Bernard, today, if you go to the world market with one bag of cocoa, you are bringing home 8,125 Ghana cities. And so how much of this money is government giving to the cocoa farmer, the producer of the gold import? And government says that I'm giving you 20, uh, 2,000 and 70 cities, which constitute 25.47%. And the argument we are conversing is that in the history of cocoa in Ghana, no government has ever given cocoa farmers less than 40% of the 
of the uh, wet market price. It has never happened because Cocoa Bot is not the producer of the cocoa. It's just a regulator of the sector. The producers are there. When you look at the uh, Cote d'Ivoire system, they are running a different system from that of Ghana. And so when they determine the price, that is the floor price. It is the minimum price that they set for license buying companies. So you cannot buy cocoa below that price, but you can buy cocoa in Cote d'Ivoire above that price. If uh, your calculation, the business is still profitable looking at the wet market price, they don't have any problem with that. You only have to pay your taxes, buy the cocoa, but not below the price they have set. Ours is different. Once you set the price, that is how much the farmer is earning. And no license buying company can buy above that price. And so the argument we, we were covering is that why should government divide the world market's market price into four? Take three and then give one to the cocoa farmer. What is the rationale behind it? It's a complete ripoff. And it has never happened in the history of cocoa. And Bernard, what surprises us is that, you know, since Nana Dodanko Akufuado and Dr. Baumia assumed uh, office as president and then vice president, under their government, Cocoa Board has been recording losses. So in the past seven years, they've been incurring losses, unprecedented in the history of cocoa in our country. That a, a particular government will be recording losses for seven consecutive years. And even this year, that they are bargaining uh, three fifth, uh, three, three fourth of the world market price. They are saying that they are also going to incur a loss of 2.6 billion. And so we cannot understand what exactly is happening in Cocoa Board. So Bernard, assuming, assuming that you are a producer of cocoa, and because Ghana wants the farmer to benefit and the nation to benefit, we have established a regulator to ensure that we produce in larger quantities. We, got, we, ensure, we provide guarantee prices to our farmers, and then we get enough from our cocoa for farmers and then the nation. Then in a period, whatever we are getting from cocoa, the government says, I am taking three fourth and I'm giving you one fourth. Everybody would complain. And the point is that it is Eric, not going to be safe for us. Eric, can you hear me? Um, is, it, yes. is it fair to use the $10,000 price in your analysis because we are told that that 10000 is the cocoa futures price? So, for example, Ghana, the amount that Ghana will get for selling its cocoa to the global buyers will not be $10,000. The, the futures, as we know, locks the price in for a year and that the price on the spot market is much lower than the 10,000. So isn't it fairer if you use the spot price in the analysis you did? And if you did that, would you still get the 40% that you were talking about in your analysis? Yes, Bernard, you see, what we have been doing over the years is that before the commencement of the season, we collateralize a specific quantity of our cocoa production, the, of the cocoa that we intend to produce, the projected output for the year specific quantity is collateralized for us to raise money to be able to buy the cocoa. Fortunately or unfortunately this year, Cocoa Board appeared before us in Parliament and indicated to us that they collateralized only 36.2% for the 800 million uh, loan that they took. So 36.2% of the projected output of 850,000 tons was collateralized. The rest, the excess beyond the collateralized figure will be sold through sports sales. And so when what you are talking about now has nothing to do with the collateralized cocoa. Because when you do the calculation, the 36.2% uh, translates into 307,000. But we are also told that even the $800 million, we were unable to assess the entire $800 million. What we had was around $600 million. So that reduces the quantity of cocoa that was collateralized. So in effect, we are talking about prices pertaining in the world market today. Because if you carry a bag of cocoa or a ton of cocoa to the world market today, and you, are, you have not collateralized the cocoa, you have not done any locking, you get the price as it pertains today. 
All right. The, the other point uh, is that Cote d'Ivoire is paying its farmers 1,500 francs per kilogram. That translates to $2.48 per kilogram. If you take our uh, new price, which is the 33,120, that's 2,070 CDs per bag of 64 kilograms. When you do the calculation, that's 32 CDs per kilogram or $2.48 per kilogram. So when you calculate Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, we are essentially paying cocoa farmers the same price for per kilogram of cocoa. So again, does that not in a way vindicate the government that the two biggest producers are essentially paying their farmers the same thing? No, Bernard, I earlier on indicated that Cote d'Ivoire is running a different system from Ghana. They don't have a regulator like we have here. They have private companies who have been registered, they pay their taxes, and then the government determines the minimum price. So when you go to Cote d'Ivoire, they have the farm grade price and they have the wholesale price. Have you forgotten what happened last year? In last year, we were told the same thing. By the end of the year, we realized that close to 150,000 tons of our cocoa have been smuggled to Cote d'Ivoire. Why is it that the prices were the same, yet people smuggled our cocoa to Cote d'Ivoire for better prices? What was the reason? That mm. 160,000 tons of cocoa that was smuggled was valued at $400 million. So we lost $400 million through smuggling. So why do we have to repeat that? Besides, besides, Bernard, you know that Ghana produces the best quality of cocoa in the world. And when it comes to premium, Ghana earns the highest premium. That cannot be challenged. When it comes mm. to pricing, when it comes to pricing, why do we even have to compare ourselves to Cote d'Ivoire? Because we earn much in the form of premium than Cote d'Ivoire. I, I see, because I noted two countries introduced a living income differential, which they jointly proposed to the buyers in the Western world. So it appears that they, they seem to have synchronized their strategy. Be that as it may, what is the NDC's alternative? Because the, 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 the problem with cocoa has been the production, as you rightly said. Output is low because of weather patterns and also because of the swollen shoot virus disease. So beyond the politics of the pricing, Ghanaians would want... You did not ask uh, uh, Absolutely. In 2016, the world market price was 2,950 US dollars. And the exchange rate at that time was $1 to 3 CDs 90 per sweat. So when you do the calculation, in CD terms, you were earning 11,505 Ghana CDs per ton. You divide it by 16, and the per bag value was 719 Ghana CDs. Government okay. at that time gave Goko farmers 66.06% which was 475 Ghana cities. And government share was 244 cities per bag. Why is it that today the opposite is the, is the situation? And Bernard, we are, we are worried about the, the, uh, the, how much they are spending on you know, administrative expenses. It is something that we cannot understand. It's unacceptable. The Auditor General reports that administrative expenses, which was less than 500 million in 2016, increased to 1.7 billion Ghana cities in 2020, and increased further to 2.5 billion Ghana cities in 2021. 2.5 billion in 2021 was okay. bigger than the entire budgetary allocation to the Ministry of Agriculture. What exactly are they doing in the office that they will need 2.5 billion Ghana cities? Instead of freeing the resources to cocoa farmers, to enable them to uh, increase cocoa production. And so it is the case that they want to spend more in their office as against investment in the fund that will increase cocoa production. L hold on, let me talk to Cocoa Board when I come back. This is the point of view. We're trying to understand the economics of cocoa pricing. Eric Opoku is the MP for Sunafu South. He's the ranking member on the cocoa sector. He's the minority spokesman for Agric. Fifi Bafu will join us when we come back to speak for Cocoa Board. This is the second price increment in the same crop season. And yet, there are concerns whether that's enough. We would find out why the production has been low, why there's been a second increase, and why farmers are still not happy. He'll react to some of the things Eric Opoku said as well. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Point of view tonight, we're looking at the cocoa sector. Government has increased the farm gate price that it pays to cocoa farmers by close to 60%. Now they're paid 33,120 Ghana CDs per ton. Well, that's up from 20,000 CDs. This is the second increase within the same cocoa period, the same crop period. Yet, it's not enough. The minority is not happy. Cocoa farmers are complaining. Fifi Bwafo speaks for Cocoa Board. Fifi, thanks for joining us. Good evening. Uh, this is the, in my history of following this, this is the first time that a government has increased the price twice in the same year. Yet, the farmers are complaining. The minority is also complaining that this price is much, much lower because the world price is at $10,000. What's the background to this increase and what is government's or Kokobo's defense for this action? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bernard, for the opportunity. So just as you indicated, this is the second time in a period of about six months we've seen an increase in cocoa price. And this is obviously good news. But uh, you also realize as a student of uh, politics, Bernard, that uh, if you have this coinciding with an election year, certainly you have people who will not be too pleased with it and they will find every possible means of watering down the effect this will have on the targeted uh, population. So yes, that's to be expected. But what has informed this decision? This decision is basically to ensure that at least you incentivize the farmers to do their best at this time where the world market price of cocoa is at a record high and you do not expect to meet the reaction uh, it's, you get from the minority. Because um, the minority, Bernard, I'm very certain about the fact that Renwari Kokoku and his colleagues, they know very well what has happened and how much they seek to take away or to chip away the kind of expectation or the response you get from this prize announcement that has happened. So, Bernard, why are we here? We are here because every cocoa producing country, in one way or the other, is, uh, has gone into forward sales. The forward sales that has been done uh, has committed you to delivering your cocoa at a certain price. Before the announcement of the cocoa price September last year, we indicated that the achieved FOB price was 2,600. And the expectation is that all the contracts we will deliver will be based on the contract we've signed, or all the deliveries will be based on the contract we've signed. But just after the announcement, we've seen uh, a hike in price that is unique. It has never happened. It's good news, but yes, this is not normal for us. And I remember very well, just about a month ago, I was with a former colleague who, works, who used to work in the trading room, and he called me and was shouting, like, what is happening? The market has gone mad. How could they have uh, $70 increase in cocoa price in a day? Today, we've seen even more than what we were talking about a month ago. The price is more. The main reason why we are here, or the key driver, is the fact that production generally in West Africa it's at its lowest level because of the El Nino effect which we are experiencing. So the market realizing that every possible cocoa that will be produced will go into servicing contracts that have already been signed. The market is now looking for cocoa because the cocoa is not available and that is what is driving the price. So we see the numbers we see today, it is based mainly because the cocoa is not available. And you find a minority say that, okay, so the fact that they've seen a price, $10,000, which is even a day spot price, that should be the basis for us to determine cocoa price. And then you realize, is that how cocoa prices are determined? Obviously, the answer is no. So just, 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 to be clear, no. just to be clear, how much is government getting per ton? Because on the price, on the world market is 10,000, that's futures. We are told the spot price is probably around 8,000. So if you're saying that government has already gone ahead to 
sort of sell the cocoa that it's getting, it will be, for transparency's sake, useful to tell us how much you're getting per ton or per bag on the world market. Then we can calculate how much you're giving the farmers and know whether the, margin, the biggest margin is going to government or the farmers. Is that not fair? Yes, but we've already quoted that. It's 2,600. That was the achieved FOP price before we started the year. And don't so, so hold on. So you're saying that all the cocoa that you are selling today, you are getting $2,600 per bag on the global market? No, no, per ton. Per ton. So the cocoa... Yes, per, yes, okay, cocoa 2000, are per ton. Today. Per ton, okay. Per ton, yes. Cocoa we are selling today is for the 2024-2025 cocoa season, which we are yet to be there. We are still within the 2023-2024 cocoa season, which we announced the price September last year. So we are not in 2025. All right, fair so enough. But, but every, what, that, that, I understand that point. But did you sell yes. all your possible cocoa output in that market in the past? Because if you were to go to the spot market today, you would get it above $8,000. Um, dollars. So, is it that you don't have any cocoa to sell on the spot market today and that all the cocoa you have has already been committed to the $2,400 per ton price? The reason why we are here is because we do not have cocoa available to do spot markets. Production level is low. So, every single contract you have, you have to ensure that you redeem your contract you've already signed. If you have excess, that is when you take your excess from beyond your contract sign to take advantage of the sports market. Today, already, we all admit that we do not have enough cocoa. Production levels are low. So how do you then take advantage of the sports market? So that is where we are. So if someone is telling you that, okay, the price, uh, in fact, the Honorable Kokoku in this conversation told you that we said during the discussions on the syndication that we are collateralizing about 375,000 metric tons. And that was the, all the cocoa we're collateralizing. That is not accurate. The cocoa you collateralize is not only the cocoa you sell within the period. Bernard, we have a space of 18 months to sell. And within the 18 months, you sell your cocoa. It is to give you visibility. It is give you an idea of how much you realize in a year. So you do not sell the cocoa when you are just at the tail end of the production year. That is when you sell the cocoa to know how much you are going to realize from the market. So if someone says that the mere fact that you've sold 375 to collateralize, that means that that is the only quantity you have. It is not correct. It is also important to note that the reason for selling the cocoa forward is not just for the collateral for the syndication. It is also a way of spreading risk because if you are to keep all your cocoa and sell them at a particular point in time and the price should fall significantly, you'll be at the losing end. Today, it makes sense for someone to say that, oh, we should have kept the cocoa and, sp and sold sports. But you also know very well that that is not the ideal situation when you are in normal times. Let me give you this critical example. Bernard, in February this year, because of what is happening in the market, Cocoa Board was only able to sell 23 tons. So if you say that we're going to keep all your cocoa and sell at this time, and now because of how crazy the market, you're able to sell only 23 tons, would you be in a position to be in business? Clearly, it would not be a prudent decision to take at the time. So what the minority should note is that we are not in a different cocoa season. We are still in 2023, 2024, where we announced the price and said that we have sold the cocoa forward. And that is why we are here. So if you pick a spot price today, use it as a basis to say that because of that, then that's how much a farmer is supposed to be paid. Then you are not being fair to the facts. Then you are only just trying to chip away the kind of uh, euphoria that has met the news, uh, news announcement. Because, mm -hmm. Bernard, we are in a situation whereby Within a space of six months, the cocoa producer price has moved from 800 cities to 2,070. And someone says that, well, it is robbing the farmer. Let me also make the point, and I, I, I'm happy you, you, you made mention of that fact. Honorable Ekopoku issued a statement last week. In fact, he had two statements issued only last week. 
The first statement he issued was that we should increase our price to meet what the Ivorians had done. Because if we do not do that, it will be to our disadvantage. Today, we have increased our price. And if you do the calculation, yeah, you are doing the calculation, but then we have done the calculation and we know very well that the difference between how much Ghana is paying cocoa farmers and what the Ivorians are paying cocoa farmers, we are paying $47 more to our Ghanaian farmers compared to the Ivorian farmers. And the people who told us that we should replicate what the Ivorians have done now say that what we have done is wrong and we are teaching mm. the cocoa farmers. Well, what my, from the calculation I have, it's essentially the same price per kilogram. And I can prove that because 1,500 francs per kilogram is about $2.48 per kilogram. Your 33,000 CDs per 64 kilogram bag is... Yes, when you calculate yours, it, it brings the figure to $2.48 per kilogram because it comes to 32 CDs per kilogram, which is about 2.4. So in my, from the calculation we have, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire are essentially paying the same price to their farmers but, for cocoa. Yes, Granted so it's not, amount. so the 47 you mentioned, I don't have facts to prove that. What I have is the same figure for two, the two countries. You, you know what, Bernard, that, that is our calculation. But granted, even that is the case. Uh, there's no need uh, arguing about this. Granted, if I'm asked to do something someone is doing, and I do the same thing, do you accuse me of doing the wrong thing? No, his point, no. His point is that Ghana's cocoa is premium. So, and the, the, because we have more farmers producing than that because ivory coast they have a different buying system he feels that Ghanaian farmers ought to be getting more than ivorian farmers so even the same amount being gotten okay, so in his view is a short thing of Ghanaians. yes that, that, that is not also correct let me explain why in the ivorian system he made reference to that yes we get premium they don't get premium it, it is not a case that the ivorian farmers don't get premium the premium levels are different i admit but in Cote d'Ivoire, as he's talking about, there's nothing like pruning done for cocoa farmers in Cote d'Ivoire. There's nothing like a subsidized fertilizer that is given to farmers in Cote d'Ivoire. All the interventions that Cocoa Board is giving to the farmers in Ghana, the Ivorian counterparts are not enjoying same. So if he's say, asking us to pay more, even though we are doing the, all these interventions and support programs for the cocoa farmer in Ghana, compared to the Ivorian counterparts, then you realize that the, what the Honorable Ekopoku is saying is not the best prescription for us going into mm. the future. Let's deal with two issues. The, you, you've admitted that production is low everywhere. We, are, we know there are four reasons why production is low in Ghana. The cocoa soling shoot virus disease, which is not peculiar to Ghana. Climate change, El Nino, is not peculiar to Ghana. But the smuggling, which some say the Ivorians benefit from us, and then there's Galamse, which is peculiar to Ghana. Shouldn't Cocoa Board and government take responsibility for the low output? Because that 600,000 tons is the lowest in over a decade. And there are other countries facing El Nino. So for example, Cote d'Ivoire's output is 25% lower than previous year. Ours is 35% lower. So clearly, there's something we are not doing right that the Ivorians are doing, for which reason our output is so low that we don't even have enough cocoa to even engage the spot market if we wanted to. Well, Bernard, that, that they engaging the sports market is not only a uh, Ghana thing. I, the Ivorians are also in the same situation, just as we also find ourselves in. But the issue about the production numbers and the, the things you talked about, one of the reasons why, in our case, um, it's been it has been affected more than probably you say in the Ivorian situation is that, in our case, we are treating more of our farms that have been affected. The farms that have been affected, if you should lift them, at least you still get some uh, port from the trees and it adds on to your uh, production numbers. In our case, all these farms are being treated. So whatever crop you are going to get from those affected farms, you lose them. You are not getting them from the affected farms. But it is good for us to do that now because when you treat those farms and then you have the farms back producing for five years later. It add on to your production numbers going into the future. So it is in actually our advantage to treat that now. So for today, you can say that, well, the numbers are not looking good, 
but it's as a result of an action that has been taken to ensure that going into the future, we are in a better position to produce cocoa rather than just relying on the few pots we are producing today and then allowing the farms to destroy as it continue to spread to farms that cater to were not affected. Yes, you talked about um, smuggling. I can say that last year, indeed, as a result of exchange rates, the agrarian price got better than the Ghanaian price. But government, the last seven years, with the exception of last year, has paid better price compared to the agrarian counterparts. Mm. What is happening is that today, the smuggling we are talking about is smuggling that is not going to agriculture. But the major point of smuggling is actually Togo, at uh, the Togo border. I'm sure you will recall an incident where people were trying to smuggle the cocoa and then the security agencies intercepted it and it turned into a different story altogether. The people who are buying the cocoa from Togo, these are not people who are in the business like the, you can say the cafe, cacao, or Ghana cocoa board. These are private people who just see an opportunity because the price today is better. Take advantage of it, sell sport, get whatever you get out of it, and then you are out of the business. As to what goes into it, tomorrow when the price is down, those people don't have any business with the cocoa farmer. They are not there. Mm. Is this something we can accumulate? And you see, there's one very significant thing happening. I remember in one of our conversations at the office when people were talking about some of the recommendations and some of the actions that have been taken and as to whether or not we can replicate them in Ghana. You know in Cote d'Ivoire today, there are people who are smuggling cocoa from Cote d'Ivoire to Guinea. There are people who are smuggling cocoa to Liberia. Is it also because Cote, uh, Cote d'Ivoire is also doing the wrong thing? That is why people are smuggling cocoa from the Africa. Fair enough. It is because of, it's because of these people who are also seeking to take advantage of the Ivorian system. And Bernard, in Cote d'Ivoire today, if any truck, any bike that is seen smuggling cocoa out of that country, it is bent instantly as a way of uh, deterring people from doing the same. Is this something we can replicate here in Ghana? Well, I'm sure mm. uh, our right. democratic yeah. will be... So, so Vivi, you, you have addressed a lot of issues for, uh, uh, the uh, Opoku race. What about the cocoa farmers? Earlier on, we had Stephen speak on radio who said farmers are being unfairly treated. He wasn't happy with the price increase. Yes, you can argue the politics with Eric but this gentleman from the Farmers Association is also with the number that you are giving. Stevenson Ananuku is not the only cocoa farmer in Ghana. And I'll address him and what he represents. I have this morning heard Mr. Charles Jemphy. Mr. Charles Jemphy in 2018 was adjudged the national best cocoa farmer. In 2019, Mr. Charles Jemphy was adjudged the national best cocoa farmer. He is the chairman of a group called Best Cocoa Farmers Association. This is an association of all award winners over the years who have won awards in cocoa. And he has expressed happiness about the announcement. But I, I struggle to base any premium on what... Uh, and the Anani gentleman you mentioned puts out. He says he is the president of Cocoa Farmers Association. Don't be, don't fall for it when he says that because there's no such association across the country called Best, uh, Cocoa Farmers Association where you have all cocoa farmers being part of it. Indeed, Honorable Ekopoku will tell you the recognized Cocoa Farmer Association, which we all know, is the Cocoa Coffee and Share Not Farmers Association that has representation across our country. This gentleman is not a representative of that association. This is a gentleman whose introduction to the Coco scheme was that um, the Coco Farmer Pension Scheme, the money set aside for the Coco Farmer Pension Scheme should be given to him because he has an association and members of his association are Coco Farmers. So the funds should be allocated to him to manage the Coco Farmers funds. And the question is, well, the MPRA law does not allow us to give Coco Farmers funds to you just because you say that you are farmers and then they are in your association. And since the date when that decision was made, everything Coco board is a crime. So Bernard, I am not saying that there will be a farmer who will not be pleased with the decision.
Just like I've told you that Mr. Charles Jemfi and his group are happy with what has happened, it is also right for people also express a different opinion. And trust me, with what Honorable Ekogu and his people are doing, you will definitely have people who will not be too pleased because they've created an impression that that adjustment after all is not something that is to their benefit but it's rather taking away something that they deserve which is not the case so you surely have people who will not be pleased but as for the gentleman you mentioned i don't think that words of him or words coming from him should be the basis for us to have any conversation because he has his interest to perceive thank you fifi boa for this is the point of view we are talking cocoa prices talking cocoa production we've been speaking to Eric Opoku who is a ranking member on the Cocoa Sector spokesperson. Fifi Buff, when we come back, there's more. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still talking cocoa. Government has increased the farm gate price of cocoa to 33,000 cities per ton, translating into roughly 2,070 cities per bag. The minority is not happy. They want a bigger increase. They've done a calculation which they've shared, and they say that the NDC gave cocoa farmers about 70% of the price, and this government is giving farmers only 24%. Fifi Bafu is strenuous to explain that the $10,000 price or even the eight thousand whatever on the market it's not the real price that we are selling our cocoa because we sell the cocoa ahead of time now let me take eric opoku's response to that eric if you're still on thank you so much if you is saying that all the cocoa that they get from our farmers the price they're actually getting is two thousand six hundred dollars per ton so if they are paying them thirty three thousand cities that's quite a healthy um a portion What's your reaction to that? Because you were saying that the, the government was just changing farmers, but he's saying they've sold all their cocoa earlier, and the price that the 1,000 we are seeing on the, on the market is not what they are getting for the cocoa that they're actually selling. Yeah, Bernard, uh, let me say that uh, that is inaccurate because we have evidence from their own report to parliament, which of course is captured, captured in the hands of parliament that they collateralized, they sold only 36.2%, which translates into 307,700 tons. In any case, Ben, Ben, let's do a simple mathematics here. Assuming they are selling the cocoa at 2,600 per ton, at an interest rate of $1 to 13, that will give you the CD equivalent of 33,800 CDs per ton. If you divide that by 16, you will get a bag value of 2,112.5. And they are giving the farmers 2,070, indicating that every bag, they are keeping just 42.5 cities. How will they even pay buyer's margin? How will they pay their workers? How are they paying for the huge administrative expenses that they are incurring? So certainly, this cannot be the price. And mm. it is not the price. Bernard, you can do the mathematics on your own. Yeah. If, if he says that they, 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 they sold our cocoa at 2,600, 2,600, yeah. and then you multiply the 2,600 by the current exchange rate of 13 cities to $1, you get a CD equivalent of 33,800. That is per ton uh, CD value. So you divide it by 16, and that will give you per bag value of 2,112.5. So if you are giving 2,070 cities to cocoa farmers, then it means that every bag, government is taking just 42.5 cities. So Bernard, then you have to pay the buyer's margin and all the other expenses, including mm. how you can pay your own workers mm. and then the huge administrative cost. So how would you say that this is the cost? Certainly, that is not it. And I'm saying this because they themselves, Cocoa themselves, reported to Parliament. And based upon their reporting and interrogation from the Finance Committee, a report was made to the floor of the House. The report was signed by the Chairman of the Finance Committee, Honorable Kweku Kwaten, 
indicating or alluding to the collateralization of the 36.2 percent and so certainly my brother Fifi should be candid enough to concede to concede that they did not collateralize the entire uh, projected output for the season but at least they collateralized a percentage a specific percentage which was captured in the report and Bernard I intend to provide you a copy of the report plus the hands up reflecting these issues I'm raising so that you you know that I'm speaking the truth and Fifi is trying to navigate I mean hovering around the point and then again when you look at the 42.5 cities I'm talking about Bernard how would you say that yes you are selling the cocoa at 2600 you are getting per bag value of 2112.5 and you are giving cocoa farmers 2070 so how are you financing cocoa in ghana what mm. then happens mm. I, I think we can let you respond to that but he also makes the point about cote d'ivoire that even in that country people are smuggling to guinea and other places so Sometimes when we say that there's... In fact, I, I have not heard anywhere that Cote d'Ivoire is reporting or complaining against smuggling of cocoa from Cote d'Ivoire to neighboring countries. But whatever it is, I haven't heard about it. Whatever it is, it is on record. And they, Coco, but they themselves reported to Ghanaians that just last year, 150,000 tons of cocoa was smuggled to Cote d'Ivoire. So we need to look at what this that induce the smuggling and then fight against those factors one of the factors is that our farmers were not given competitive price and so if we can sell to Cote d'Ivoire and then get more money why not so if you do that you incentivize smuggling and that is why we we, we, we demanded earlier on that please let's give our farmers competitive prices to avoid this kind of situation that we are experiencing and I want to remind Fifi that the report that I intend to produce, they stated that they collateralized 36.2 percent in order to take advantage of the rising prices in the world market. It is in their own report to Parliament, and so you can't come out here to say something that is quite different mm. from the report that you made to us. And in fact, the Finance Committee asked them how they are going to utilize. The, the windfall that they expect. Because if you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you use $2,600 to determine the price, and you are saying that, oh, you are going to sell some of your cocoa through sports sales, you want to take advantage of the increasing prices. So the committee asks, how then are you going to manage the windfall that you are expecting? And they said that they were going to establish the stabilization account and then put that money in that account mm -hmm. to take care of cocoa farmers. Okay. This is captured in the report of the Finance Committee, signed by no meaner person than the chairman who is a member, an MPP member of Parliament, Honorable Kwaku Kwaten. And so we can't run away from this point. Be so these are facts known to us in Parliament. Before, so be, is, yeah, before Fifi responds, I, 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 I have a final question for you, sir. So uh, NDC is in opposition now, but there are two issues that whoever wins the election has to deal with. Our output has gone down, not just because of smuggling and weather, but also galamse. Number two, the Europeans are now saying they will not buy cocoa from countries that de use deforestation to produce cocoa or produce yeah, cocoa. Yeah, so, so these are two big issues. So beyond fighting for farmers and giving them more, if you even win the election, you are going to face, galamse is still there. The EU law is not going to change because NDC has won, right? So how are you going to deal with the low output and the issue of the demand for our cocoa in Europe? because of this deforestation rule yes number one is the deforestation issue you recall that during the ndc period we embark on a vigorous afforestation in our country we were planting uh, trees all over the country you recall under the uh, leadership of colin Zoda as the minister for lands and natural resources i recall in my own area you go to the coco rural areas some trees were planted and so we intend to do that because if we cannot destroy the entire forest today and then subject our people to hardships in future. So that one, we have to fight against that. We need to protect the resources that we have 
for the benefit of the upcoming generation. And then you talk about Galamse. You see, the issue about, about Galamse, you know, under the law, under Article 257, all the mineral resources, wherever it is located in this Ghana, in this country, is vested in the president. The president has the power to take care of these resources for posterity. But you know the president came to parliament for parliament to approve an amount uh, to the tune of 100 million Ghana cities to enable him to fight the menace of Galante. We approved the money. The president has expended the money. And so Galamse is on the increase. So the issue is about the political commitment to do what we must do. And you know, President Mahama has already given his word that he intends to do what is right, what will enable the good, of, uh, the good people of Ghana achieve decent life, enjoy mm. life that everybody will, will, will see that, yes, I'm a Ghanaian, will be proud of being a Ghanaian. That's exactly what we are going to do. So the issue of Galamse, you recall when we were power, we had a roadmap that we're thinking about alternative sources of livelihood to get our people out of that uh, uh, business so that they can yeah. uh, look at these ones and then preserve our resources for the future generation. And then also, we were, we are going to reintroduce the free fertilization. We are going to provide the chemicals in quantities that will be adequate to ensure increase in cocoa production. We are not going to borrow $600 million to come and uh, give cocoa farms on contract. All right, fair enough. There are people who have no idea as to how to cultivate cocoa farms should go right. and then cultivate farms while the farmers are not doing anything. Thank you, Eric. We would rather give the money to the cocoa farms, yeah. deploy extension officers, and ensure that these farms are properly rehabilitated. Thank you. As we speak now, no, we, we have to wrap up. We have collateralized we, we, we have to cocoa trees. We have to wrap up because of time. For a of 600 million. Bernard, are you listening to me? Yes, we have to wrap up. I wanted to Let just... Let me land on this point. Okay. As we speak now, we collateralize the cocoa trees for a loan of $600 million for cocoa rehabilitation. What is the, the state of the re rehabilitation? They cut down some of the farms. Now they don't have money to continue. And they are asking the farmers to go and continue uh, with the rehabilitation. How right. can they do that? All right. Thank you. Fifi. Some people were high to eat. They have not been paid. They said they were going to give them some money. Eric Kupoku, thank you. Th thank you. The point is clear. Thank you very much. I wanted thank to just point much. out that there's a story that has been supplied that Ivory Coast sees the 100 tons of cuckoo at the border with Guinea. And this is from no mean a website than Reuters. And this is February 16, 2024, where Ivory Coast... Oh, I just said that it doesn't come to my attention. Uh, okay, I just want to point That's out that. I no, I, I just want to be clear, you know, for, for both no, of I you. No, I said it doesn't come to my attention. I, I, I get your point. But for, I, for but the, I've challenged no, 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 people on the 2000... I'll let him, I'll let him address that. That is wrong. I know, I'm saying that... Let's see, information. Fair enough. Yeah. What, what I do is to, for the public record, let the public know. So I'm fact-checking both of you. And on this point, Ivory Coast intercepted 1,500 bags of cocoa beans on the border with Guinea, and the regulator said, now, Fifi, we don't have a lot of time, but in a minute, $2,600, if you say you sold all, he's made two very fundamental points. You said in the, in the committee report that that's only 36% of our cocoa. And if all our cocoa were sold at $2,600, there's no way we're going to pay anybody else. So that figure may be true for only part of our cocoa. And you need to concede that it's not all our cocoa that we sold at that price, Fifi. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bernard, the point is, that is the average achieved. The average achieved means that at a point in time, you may sell more than 2,600, and at a point in time, you may sell lower than that. So when you strike the average, so that's why we say it's the average FOB. So it is not to say that every single cocoa was sold at 2,600, just like the minority want us to believe right. that for now, every cocoa is sold at 10,000. Without realizing that the factors no. don't support we, that we claim. Said that. All right. We haven't said that. Th thank we haven't you. Said that. We, we have to end it here. Th 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 thank you. Thank you. I think the points have been well made. We appreciate the insights. And I think our viewers have enough information to decide. And of course, we've also put out information. Thank you for being on the program. Eric Opoku is MP for Sunafu South. He is the minority spokesperson on cocoa and agri affairs. Fifi Buafo is the head of communication at Ghana's Cocoa Board. Thank you for watching tonight's edition of the show. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.